Welcome to the podcast, Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business by Coach James Short. This podcast is designed to help you with strategies, insights, and ways to increase sales, build and lead high-performing teams, and ultimately grow your business. Your host, James Short himself, also shares some of his secret sources on how he helps his own clients achieve business growth quickly and easily. James has been coaching those in the real estate and property industry for close to 10 years now, and his clients keep on saying, since working with James, their results have been outstanding, giving them more money, time, and fulfillment. James is offering a free strategy call to those listening to see how he can assist you to take your business to where you want to go. Simply go to jamesshort.com.au forward slash strategy and book in a time today. Now on with the show. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business. Coach James Short here once again, and we are excited. We're always excited to uh, have these amazing guests on the show to provide you with content, resources, strategy to help you grow your business, to lead your business. And you know, most people are in businesses for three main reasons. More money, more meeting, and more freedom. So today we're going to share with you all three because this guy, he's a rock star. He's a super, superstar in a mover and shaker within the industry, Richard Lindley. Now, Richard is, is, is you know, this is not his first radio. He's been around within the industry for numerous years. He started his company, Realview, back in close to 21 years ago. And in relations to content marketing, in relations to understanding the written word, understanding the power of actually communicating your message, your word out there into your marketplace. And so what Richard has done is seen the opportunity, the gap that most real estate agents find out there in relation to communicating the message, providing valuable resources and information where, you know, most agents think they bloody well can do it themselves. But you know what? We know the truth that they can't. And this is where he's launched Party Care, an opportunity to really provide that value of content to allow the agent and the leading directors out there to stand out from the crowd and really position themselves as the leaders and the influencers within the industry. So, mate, I've known Richard for a number of years. We're good mates. We're uh, our wives know each other. They've all grown up together. So, kids play, hang out. So, it's nice to have him on on the show today, mate. Richard, so good to be here. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Jamie. Lovely to be here uh, as usual. <laughs> Great Love to see you. It. Love it, mate. Uh, now, we, as I said, we, we go back a little while and it's so nice to see your journey and in, in what you've achieved and accomplished and, and so far with, with Realview. Like 21 years, that's, that's a huge, you know, huge success just in that, right? Keeping the doors open, right? <laughs> um, can you share with the, the, the listeners today that journey? What has that journey been like and, and how, if you look back to 21 years ago, how did it all get started? Wow, yes. Well, you know, it was a very different business back then. The idea we had back then, um, which would be easy to do now looking back, but, you know, we, we had a Google Earth idea. You know, right. these days, very easy to, to go online uh, when you're looking for a property, for example, and there's a map that shows you where it is. But that was actually the idea we had in 1999. But of course, wow. there was no technology around to do that. So we had to kind of come up with it, I guess. And, uh, and it was kind of, you know, I, I had the concept of let's start with an aerial photograph, you know, of Sydney, uh, so that you can say I want to live here, and then you know start clicking in and zooming in, you know, on the aerial photograph, and then see all the properties on 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 the on on the photo. Mouse over it, shows you the property, click through, takes you to that property, so you can look at it online. And this is early days, and that was kind of where we started. But of course, it was difficult because you know the. We, we could get aerial photographs and we had this technology that would squash it down and deliver it online, but it wasn't, they weren't auto rectified. So you couldn't like get an address and overlay the map and just drop it on like you can now. You can just have a mashup and you've done it in five minutes, you know, yeah. here's a list of properties, here's some mapping, boom, you're done, right? And I remember uh, there was no way to do it. So I remember, you know, and, and there was no way to get the listings. So I remember we were all sitting in my house every Saturday morning. We'd run down early and get the newspaper, the Sydney Morning Herald, the domain section, and we'd have that listing of open houses. And we'd be there manually going through it and trying to work out on this aerial photograph where that property was and then typing in the address for the agent's property, uh, for the agent's website where you could go and see it. So, yeah, 
very, very uh, long time ago. Wow. <laughs> it's something that's really easy to do now. Wow. And, and, and tell, tell me about the, the, the journey on how Partica came about. Where was that idea? Where was that initiative? Where, where did that come from? Yeah, well, fast forward, well, almost 20 years, probably 17 years, I guess. And, um, you know, we morphed from that into doing digital publication. And, you know, so we take newspapers, magazines, brochures, that kind of thing, and put online like you put things through, you know, online. Uh, but, and, and that was fine. And that's what our business has been. Uh, and, um, but now everyone's on a mobile phone. So it just doesn't render well on mobile, right? So no, no good clicking. So we went back to scratch, looked at all, all the things that we've done over the years and said, you know, what would we build? So we built this technology to actually pull the content out of that printed PDF into essentially an article. Right, so we could then deliver it responsively on any device. So it would read flow and it'd be really easy to read. No pinching and zooming. So once we've done that, we realized that we were sitting on thousands, hundreds of thousands of articles from all different types of, of, of uh, magazines and newspapers. So we thought, hang on, you know, publishers are always looking for new revenue. Businesses are always looking for content. Why don't we try and bring the two together? And that's kind of where Partica came from. So we sort of developed it as a content licensing platform. Think of it as a, a as a, um, a stock image library, but for articles. That's oh, essentially what we did. What we, we that's a beautiful image, right? I can so picture that. That is, yeah, and it just it's so true because you know it's a nice marriage of 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 businesses need content. You know, we've got amazing journalists out there. Let's 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 put them all together. So. And that, that was another thing. Writers are, you know, they're inherently, you know, they're, they're great at writing. Don't get me wrong, not, not, uh, not doing them any wrong. Uh, but they're just not organised. You know, so you ask them and say, have you got some content you want to sell? And they don't know whether they even own it because they've, they've written it for someone else and there's just no, nothing there. No, no way of them knowing. So Partica for a writer is a slightly different proposition where they can upload all of their content and then they can use our platform to, to license it out. So they know what, who they sold their content to and under what license. Love it. Love yeah. it. So yeah. good. And so good. obviously, you know, they can sell it multiple times. So, you know, that, that article really easy to get it, edit it, sell it again. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, if you think about, think about the past, I'll go a little bit personal here, right? Think about the past and, and in relations to, to growing your business, obviously, you know, we've all got the scars to, to prove it, but if you look back at some of the, the challenges that you faced along the way, yeah, what have been those challenges that have really shaped you? Obviously you've come out the other side, yeah. but have really shaped who you are today and the business today. Yeah. Well, look, I think the first challenge was that, within six months of starting the GFC hit. <laughs> so that was going on, you know, everything was great, you know, the, oh, sorry, the, not the GFC, the, the dot-com bubble, but yeah. Yeah, Ouch. it was later, the GFC was like, <laughs> yeah, the dot-com bubble burst, so, you know, you know our, our, our dreams of building this internet company and selling it for millions of dollars, you know, quickly went out the window. So that was challenge <laughs> number one. Uh, and then I remember another time where, you know, we finally, finally, and, and it took us, took us two years to get our first client, really. Wow. And that was the Wentworth Courier, right? Oh. Digital publication. That was the first client we ever had. So straight into the real estate, uh, you know, obviously it's all, it was all real estate. It was like fat stick back then. Yeah, so and true. It was amazing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and Hannah loved it, loved it. And, um, and and that was our first client. And then, you know, so over time, we got more and more clients, um, but he kind of just remained one. And I remember another major challenge was uh, we got a, a, we had a big client in New Zealand, same sort of thing, all the real estate, but they pulled out. And that was 80% of our revenue. Oh, oh that's fine. You know, we got Gmail. Oh, we're finishing up with you next month. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> So, yeah, and, and look, just overall, the challenge of just being in a technical space is you're just having to constantly, constantly reinvent yourself. That's, that's a big challenge, you know. So yeah. it's not like you just come up with a product and, or a widget, you know, and you just start manufacturing it and that's it and off you go. It is literally something that has come out. The technology's changed. You know, people go from desktops to, to, to laptops to tablets to mobile. You're just making... To watches. To, it's to just watches. crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
you can get the rent your implant <laughs> so, uh, you know so just you know it's just a constant uh, a constant challenge to keep up with everything learn everything and just you know change with the times yeah so true so true but if you look back because you guys have had some huge successes some great success what are some of those been those monumental moments or those milestones that you've hit that yeah. you look back and go, wow, that was that was awesome. What were some of those? Yeah, those yeah I think one of the best ones for me in my memory um, was National Geographic. So we, you know, I mentioned we do flip books. One of what part of that is we have an archive product, and National Geographic, you know, at the time they had like a, a CD or a DVD set you could buy and install it on your computer, and you know it had every past issue of the National Geographic on it, right? But of wow. course. You had to install it and you know they had to keep it updated and send people out new cds so they wanted to put it online so we got invited to present you know our solution to uh to national geographic and and they said oh Billy, you know you can promote you know you can you can you can um you can present remotely that's fine and i'm like i said i looked at my business partner and we, yeah we didn't really have a great deal of money at that point i said you know if there was if it was anyone else i would have said no, let's not, let's not, you know, go there. We can present remotely. But then, you know, I said, no, we've got to get on that plane. We've got to go over there and I've got to be in person and do it. And I literally got to the airport. I bought like, you know, 10 jars of Vegemite, 10, you know, 10 sort of, you know, the tacky um, packages you get there with like the yep. boomerang and, Love it. and this, this and that. And I took it all over there and I went into this big boardroom and I laid it all out, you know, and, and printed out this beautiful presentation, you know, around the thing. And, you know, I, I literally flew in there and then, you know, did the presentation and literally flew out the next day. Uh, so it was such a whirlwind trip. Uh, but in the end, you know, it was worth doing it because we, we won that. And uh, they're still a client today. Oh, so how good is that? That's yeah. a beautiful success story. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, what a marquee client, you know, who, you know, there's, there's never any question about your credibility when you say, that, who are your clients? And you say, well, National Geographic and the New Yorker. Like, yeah, like, done. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 where do I sign? My little, B2B, my, my little B2B magazine is going to be safe with you. <laughs> love it, love it. Now, let's let's talk Partica for, for a moment. Let's talk in relation to content where you know because I, I hear so often that you know people want to do content they feel that it's so important yet they feel that they can do it themselves where do you think it goes wrong for for most business owners and real estate agents leading agents where do you think it goes wrong for them yeah i, I think the main problem and i have it for my own business and we're in the content business is the ability to produce the content consistently yes you know, because you just go Yep, I can do that. And, you know, you can write. Most people can write. Um, and, you know, uh, and most people, you generally don't have an, uh, any problems with coming up with ideas to write about because you get asked questions all the time about what happens here, what happens at the auction, you know, all these different questions. So it's not that there's a shortage of material, but you go, yeah, I can do that. So you sit down one night and go, bang, you, 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 you whack out an article, think, fantastic, great, put it on a blog. Next week, oh, no, no, I've forgotten about that. I, I, I'm off doing prospecting. I'm doing something else. I'm showing this house. I'm, I'm, oh, I've got to go to the kids this weekend, you know, and then suddenly you forget about it. And, you know, you can go to any real estate site, almost, just about any, and this is why, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's an opportunity out there. And, and you'll see, last post, you know, 2017. August, <laughs> it's <like>. it's crickets. <laughs> yeah, not, not a good look, guys. Come on, you know. So that's the challenge. It's not that you can't produce the content. It's that, that you put aside the time and write the content, you know, each week and make sure you post it. And then, you know, posting the first part. Then you've got to, you know, tweet it and, and put it on your Facebook and, and, you know, send it out via Instagram or all your social channels. Uh, so... Yeah, it's, it's just that consistency, I think. And that, that's where we, we solve that problem for you by going, here's an article, here's an article, here's an article. And literally, you just copy and paste. And in some instances, it's kind of ready for you there in, in your workspace and you just drag and drop it on. So that, that's the problem we solve. So important. And, and that's a, such an important point that you raise because people trying to do everything themselves, I find rather than I'm a big believer is sticking to your genius and most agents out there 
they love the thrill of the the, the, the catch and kill of yeah. when there's a deal on let's you know they they can sniff it out anywhere and let's go let's go let's go let's go run now you put them in front of a computer and and try and write or manage their database it, it, it's just like it's they, there's a glaze that comes over their eyes yeah and so when people want to have the perception of i can do it well where is your time properly or should be spent is it you know really mastering your genius and 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 getting and outsourcing everything else i'm a big believer but yep. the question i want to segue into is is why is why is content so important it's really important because look the, the one of the biggest challenges i feel uh, for agents right now are, are, are the big networks you know they're going to shut me down when they hear this you know they they they're, they're the frenemies they're, they're your best friend but they your your worst enemy um, and, you know, a lot more people, I guess, are doing research online, you know, uh, to, to about buying or selling their property. You know, I heard recently that the, the average time between, you know, buying and selling or, you know, turning over your property has gone from seven to 12 years so, or, or 11 years. So it's, 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 it's getting longer. Yeah. Um, and so people don't do it all the time like real estate agents do. So, of course, you go online and you try to get some information about it. Now, you know, when you arrive at someone's website, you want to sort of look at who they are and how they can help you. You know, not necessarily what property has got for sale or what they've sold. Or, you know, they might look at the team, but they're there to look for help about buying a property, selling a property, finding the right property manager. And if you don't have that information on your website, they're going to go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, so it's... It's not that you just have to have a blog, you know, and you need something to say. And, you know, it's about when people arrive at your website, because that's the other thing that, that agents really need to understand is you're spending all this money to get people to your website. When they get there, they, you need to capture them. And what do they do? Yeah. And, and there's some basic principles that might not be obvious to them because their marketing has been different over, over the years. So when you get online, it's slightly different. And, you know, it's, it's, if you're a digital marketer, it's kind of 101, but if you're not used to it, you don't know. So you need to get people there. You need to give them the information. And there's other th simple things like having, you know, the, uh, capture the pe person's information before you give them some information, for example, or, you know, but you need that content first to give them. Yeah. Now, again, you to write it, it's probably not your, you know, it's not your jam. You can get, you know, you can get someone like us to provide it for you. So true because it is a, it's a, it's a capturing the audience, but getting them to stay and providing that value add. It's like, wow, these guys know what they're talking about. There's so much great content. There's so much more added value that I'm here on their site and you can read on their socials to go, you know, it's not just about me, myself and I spruiking a property. It's yeah. about, you know, how can I add value to prospective vendors, tenants, uh, property uh, landlords. So yeah. it's looking at all those different value added information that people go, wow, they actually know what they're talking about. And, and thank so you. For, for that providing content you. also, you know, it doesn't need to just sit on your website. You know, we mentioned social media before, you know, it's important to get it on there, but I know, um, you know a lot of agents love the printed material, love the direct marketing, you know, the letterbox drops. That's been, you know, that's been fundamental in the past. Yeah. And I feel that, you know, it still is, there's, there's no problem. Uh, with that, but what we're trying to do is educate the agents to change, I guess, change the profile, change the perception of how they're seen in the marketplace. Because, you know, when you open your letterbox and you get, you know, this is what I've sold, this is what's for sale, or here's my team, you're kind of relying on the fact that I'm ready to sell or list or get an appraisal or whatever it is. It's, it's kind of, you know, you're gambling with your marketing, you know, oh, well, are they ready? Are they ready? So you're spending a lot of money there. Cool. So you could use some of this educational, informative content and put that in your printed mail, mailings, you know, in, in, like in, in a mini newsletter or even a mini magazine. We're going to come up with a mini magazine. Yep. It is uh, something that someone will pick up and go, even if I'm not looking to sell or buy or invest, there's something in there for me. It's lifestyle content. There's some advice yeah. there about if I am ready to sell, well, this is how I should, you know, this is how I can style my house. Yep. Um, and, you know, it, I might not be ready, but I, I look at this and, you know, it goes into my memory that, hey, you know, James Short Real Estate have sent me this. 
and they keep sending me this information all the time. And he's not asking me to buy, he's not asking me to come and do an appraisal. He's just giving me all this information. So when you are ready to buy or sell or invest or get someone to manage that property for you, you're gonna go, you know what? James Short knows what he's talking about. He's, he's been consistent. He's given me all this content and information and educated me about the things that I don't know. I'm gonna go and see him. Love it, love it. So but, true, isn't it? Rather than just the, the go, 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 go. Let's let's provide that 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 value, that that expertise. So love it. So yeah. if you were to give, if you were to give three pieces of advice to the listeners out there in relation to this, what would what would those three pieces of advice be? Yeah, I think you know the first the first one would be um, make sure you've got some content. You know, even if you're writing it yourself, make sure you've got some sort of content. Um, and, and the second thing is, you know, be consistent, be absolutely consistent with it, you know, because there's no point just, you know, it, it, it's like any kind of advertising, you know, you can't expect yeah. to put one ad out and then everyone knows about you and they come to see you. <laughs> that way. That's so, I'll, I'll tell you now, and then this is probably, you know, people look at this, go, oh my goodness, this is going to take so long, but it's, but you know, content marketing, which is essentially what we're talking about, you know, providing educational informative content to people takes even longer. You know, because it's going in subliminally. You're not like saying to someone, you know, buy, 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 and then when they're ready, they buy. You, yeah. you're just drip feeding them this content, right? Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you need to be consistent. And then the third thing is, you know, I read somewhere just recently where just things go unanswered. You know, like question, you know, people call or send an email or, or send an SMS or something, and it goes unanswered. You know, and to me, that's just, that's crazy. You know, how can that, how can you let that, that you know, you, if you're going to do all of this effort, you know, how can you let that lead just fall onto the floor? Correct. You know? And it really doesn't matter. And, and the thing is, you know, with the content marketing, you're positioning yourself as a person who knows about this kind of thing, you know, knows about buying, knows about selling, knows, and a lot of agents, for example, like to be, you know, on the pulse of what's happening within their community. You know, they're, they're, they're sponsoring yeah. the Life Saving Association or they're, you know, the you know, helping the school fake or whatever it is, um, is to expect to get a few calls from people who aren't, you know, they're just looking for advice. And you and you and you've got to give them that advice without kind of, you know, asking them to sell their property. Yeah. Because that's the whole the whole idea behind providing this educational informing content is that you want people to see you as the expert and come to you and ask you these questions. You know, because they'll tell other people and say that James Short guy, he really knows about that stuff. Noisy stuff, right? Yeah, you should you should talk to him, you know? Yeah. Love it, love it. I mean there's such such beautiful pieces of advice and it's it's so true on, on, on all those all those elements. So what's what's coming up what's coming up for you? What's on what's on your horizon? What's 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 the yeah, next six four months? As a like? business, you know, one of one of the difficulties that we have with our platform is that it's you know, when, when you know, I gave that analogy, the um, image library for articles is that you need a lot of articles to cover, every, you know, to cover every type of business, I suppose. And this is one of the reasons we're in real estate is because we need to do this in vertical segments. Yeah. You know, we need to get the content that's relevant to a certain market, you know, to agents, for example, market it, come up with that blueprint of showing them how to do, you know, what and how how to do things with their content as well. That's very important. It's not just getting the content. You know, we're going to show you what to do and how to how, how to do it. Yep. Um, but we are going to sort of expand it into other areas. Uh, you know, right. so for example, travel. We've got a lot of travel content. Health and lifestyle. Um, you know, pets, vets, kind of thing. You know, so there's a lot. And and ultimately, we want to see it as a marketplace where people can create content, put it up. And, and you know you, they'll use this platform to, to sell it to other people. But you know we've got a long way to go before we can just say, hey, come and get your articles. Here. <laughs> yeah. you, you know if you, if you do that sort of globally, and someone comes in there and, and there's no content for them, then you kind of lost them forever, and it's a waste yeah. of marketing effort. So we're really kind of laser focused on real estate at the moment because you know for a number of reasons. One, you know I think the real estate agents need a lot of help because they're you know they're not doing it at the moment. Or they're struggling to do it, you know, consistently as we've spoken. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's not a lot of content out there either. You know, I mentioned earlier that um, uh, you know we get content from real estate, well, uh, for, from from publishers, but there's not no one really 
producing a magazine that says this is how to buy and sell a property, you know, as, as, a, as a person, not, a, not as an investor, there's plenty of, you know, there's a couple of investment magazines out there, but not from someone who's only doing it every, every 11 years. Yeah, exactly so, right. Exactly so yeah, right. so in the future, we're really looking to expand it as, a, as an overall, um, you know, marketing platform for, for content. Fantastic. Wow, yeah. super exciting. So where where can the listeners go to find out more? Where can you send them? What's What would be a Yeah, suggestion? well, they can just go to parsica.com. Um, you know, that's that's where everything is. That's where the marketplace is. And, you know, there's links there to teach them about content marketing and, and you know, they can search for all different types of content because, you know, look, you might not want to send out just real estate articles. You might send out a recipe, you know, because, again, it's lifestyle. You know, how yeah. to spring tier. This is how to rejuvenate that, you know, vegetable garden you created last year or whatever it is. It's just nice advice that you can put in your email so that people stay on it rather than just going, you know, here's what's for sale. So, yeah, particle.com, you can go there and, uh, you know, we've got probably 5,000 articles to choose from already. Wow, fantastic. So, guys, go and check it out, Partica, P A R T I C A dot com. Heaps of information, heaps of resources, so much value there just from, from, as soon as you log on so so go and check it out guys richard really appreciate your time energy and expertise this afternoon but we could be chatting for hours uh, looking forward to our next catch up and uh, mate thank you once again for everything today awesome thanks for having me jamie cheers bye for now bye